Good evening, everyone. It's lovely to be with, with you again. And um, my wife and I just bring greetings from uh, both of us, really. Diane is, is uh, ex excited about uh, having contacted people and just loving on people and just saying thank you so much. Thank you for your support of us as, as pastors in the church and, and, and ministry. So I want to thank you for that. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to share your word tonight. Thank you that people's lives will be touched and changed, and we give you praise. There's nothing that the enemy can do, because Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly, and we give you praise for that, Father, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. I want to read you a, um, a, a very applicable story as we continue to think about living a lifestyle of victory. This is what we are. Uh, we're, a, we're a prosperous church. We're a prosperous people. Uh, and concentrate. You know, people often ask me, why, why, why do you want to be prosperous? And the reason I want to be prosperous is that I can assist and I help avoid calamity in somebody else's life. You ever tried to help somebody when you've got nothing? Uh, when I, before I was saved, I had nothing. Um, being an alcoholic didn't help very much, but I didn't have, have uh, yeah, nothing. So we, we've, we've been through those times and I would prefer to be where I am now that we're able to assist and help people through the church, through our own personal lives, through the people in the church. We have wonderful giving. I want to thank you, church, for, for continuing to sow and bless and we continue to, to give out many um, uh, emergency food parcels through um, the different agencies that work with us. And um, we're coming out of this situation with a high hand. I've said before, like the Israelites come out of Egypt, we're coming out the same way because of his goodness and grace. So I want to say this um, to you. I want to re read you a, a story. Well, it's not a story. It's, it's an applicable story, and I, I, I trust that you, you will get hold of this. In fact, it, it becomes so applicable to you. Uh, listen very carefully, because there's something. People are actually walking through life just like this, and um, they sometimes think they'll never get out. But I'm here to tell you today, there's not a hole that is too deep. Uh, an ocean too deep, a, a mountain too high, that God is not going to come and get a hold of you and help you through this. He's going to lift you out of your situation. So listen to this. One day a farmer's donkey fell down into a well. The animal cried out for hours as the farmer tried to figure out what to do. Finally decided the animal, there's just no way they, they could get him out. And so they didn't want him to suffer, so they thought what they will do is they'll cover him up. Um... He invited all his neighbours, I mean, that's not, not nice, but please be, be with me. He invited all his neighbours to come over and help him. They all grabbed a shovel and began to shovel dirt onto the, into the well. The donkey, donkey continued to cry horribly. And then to everybody's amazement, he quietened down. A few shovel loads later, the farmer looked down the well. He was astonished at what he saw with each shovel of dirt that hit his back. The donkey was doing something amazing. He would shake it off and take a step up. As the farmer's neighbor continued to shovel dirt on top of the animal, he would shake it off and take a steep step up. Are you following me? So he's stepping up on the dirt. Pretty soon everyone was amazed as the donkey stepped over the edge of the well and happily off, trotted off. Now, let's make application. Life is going to shovel dirt on you, all kinds of dirt. The trick to getting out of the well is to shake it off and take a step up. Each of our troubles is a stepping stone. We get out of the deepest well just by not stopping, never giving up, shake it off and take a step up. I want to read that again. Troubles can become stepping stones. We can get out of the deepest well just by not stopping and never. Church, listen to me nicely. Never stop. Never give up. That's who we are. We are not a, we're a, what's the word? We're a can-do church, not a can't-do church. Remember that. And so we shake it off and step it up. Last time I preached, somebody looked at it and said, I, I talked about monkeys, donkeys, animals, but... I don't know about you. I'm stepping up, not out of that well, but any situation that will come against us. 
and we are still waiting for Kerry's uh, immigration to arrive. I am stepping up on the Word of God that God promised Diane and I 20 odd years ago, 22 years ago, that our eldest daughter and the family would come and join us in Australia. I am stepping up on that. If it hasn't come today, it'll come tomorrow. All right? So I want you to stand with me in the. And so I thought that this, in our time, this uh, story was so appropriate because at HFCC, we are people of faith. We are people of the word. We are people who are going forward, who never give up, never give in, never go give over. Because you know why, church? We read the back of the book. At the back of the book, we overcome. The book of Revelation is so wonderful. It, it tells us that we win. If you read it, it says you'll be blessed, but if you read the last part of it, we win. Jesus is going to be coming back for us. Amen. So 3 John 2. I want to just uh, look at this. 3 John chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved, I, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. What I want to say to you today is that the, the, one of the keys to that is soul prosperity. It's attitude. All right? It's attitude. I, and I wrote this down. How can we be up, an up person in a down world? How can we be an up person in a downward path that you're always up? Yes, because the word lifts me up. But I wrote this to you. An enthusiastic, happy person with the right attitude, it intrigues the world. They'll look at you and they'll go, how can you do that? Why are you doing that? Don't you see what's going on around you? You say, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what the media says. I'm not moved by what anybody else says. I'm only moved by what the Word of God says. I am moved by this Word because this Word will hold me steady and will keep me on focus. I will be an up person in the down world. I read there, there's something magnetic and powerful about a victorious Christian, people who are drawn to a consistent, excited believer. Believe man, me, you can be. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Because I believe you can step up into a victory so zone and keep excited about life, church. I really do believe that. I really believe that you and I, as children of God, with God living on the inside of us, with the Holy Spirit strengthening us on the inside, we can ever overcome all things by faith through Him who loves us. Amen? Because it says here, it doesn't matter regardless of your family situation, financial status, past failures. Who's failed? I failed in the past. But keep we can keep ourselves up in a victory zone and keep excited about life. I get up in the morning and you know me. We're excited about life. We're excited about coming to church. We're excited about the Word. Why? Because it costs too much to be miserable and sucking lemons. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Written here. Has, God has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places. You and I are seated with Christ, church. We're seated with him. He's at the right hand of the Father. We're seated with him in heavenly places. Sometimes we say, we say we should be looking up at Jesus. But there are sometimes we should be looking down because of where we're seated. The devil is under our feet. Coronavirus, um, defeat, lack under our feet. Jesus Christ came and made a show of the devil, triumphing him over him in it. You and I have to... Look at the devil from the position. Where are you seated? Where are you seated today? I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Hopefully, you're seated with me. Now, think about this. You're seated with me at the banqueting table. He's made a banqueting table. You and I need to be seated there. If you're not seated, I'll have your portion. Amen? We're seated at the banqueting table. He says, come sup with me. Please come with us. Come and sit at the banqueting table because you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who saved you. Now, we talk about attitude. That's the attitude that I have. You and I have this together. Two things. Our attitude must be one of humility and our attitude must be one where we are full of faith. You say, but humility, why is that, Ian? 
to be humble and, and to have a humility is to be teachable. I wrote this out. An unteachable spirit is an unwillingness to change. People refuse to implement new and vital information as it becomes available. What do you mean? Well, it's this word. If you're in need of something, we go to the word. We find the answer to the word. We become teachable. We have a humble heart. Remember what it says in James 4, 6. It it says that God gives grace to the humble but resists the proud. God gives grace, God's riches at Christ's expense, God's grace, His love and care, because we're saved by grace through faith. By grace, God's gracious, so grace, grace. We don't have to work for it. And so we go to Him and say, Lord, I thank you that today I am humble. Please show me in the Word, teach me in the Word, lead me in the Word to victory, Lord, so that may I be, may be an example for you. So two things when I look at attitude. It, it's about the attitude of being humble and teachable. The, ex- the next one is to be full of faith. Now, I don't like this. I, I was thinking about people. Uh, in the Bible, two people, humble and full of faith. Two people. Go to Acts chapter 6. I love this. This gentleman is Stephen. Acts chapter 6. And in verse... Acts chapter 6. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man of full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And then in verse 8, look at this that he said. He was full of the Holy Ghost. And Stephen, full of faith and power. So in one say, he, he pleased, he was a man, they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and a man who was full of faith and power. When you look at the life of Stephen, when you go back to the book of Acts and you see him, he was a humble man. He was a servant of God, but he served tables. There's nothing wrong with serving tables, church. He who wants to be first shall be last. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. You and I should not be afraid to serve in humility because God will raise us up because we can be full of faith. I've always said it. You can serve sables. You can wait at the door. When you're waiting at the door, you reach out your hand to, to speak to somebody and the Lord gives you a word for them. You can be used in the gifts if you are humble and, change, and, and teachable. But to be full of faith, I like that in Stephen. But there's another guy, Barnabas. I love that. His name means son of encouragement. He was always encouraging people. But I want to go to Acts 11. I'm excited now. I'm, I'm talking to faith. Maybe I'll get a show down. Oh, man. Uh, Acts, Acts chapter 11, verse 24. It's talking about Barnabas. And I want to read from the Amplified. For he was a good man, good in himself, and also at once for the good and the advantage of other people, full and controlled by the Holy Spirit, and full of faith of his belief that Jesus is the Messiah through whom we obtain eternal salvation. And a large company was added to the Lord. That's what I want you to see. Through our our attitude of humility and of faith. Humility, we're teacher, we're full of faith. What does it do? Um, What did I say earlier? There's something magnetic and powerful about a victorious Christian walking in humility and full of faith. Heritage of faith. Let me declare over you that you have the right attitude, an attitude of faith, full of faith, but humility. You, church, are going to make a difference in the Gold Coast. You're going to make a difference in our church. You're going to make a difference in your community. Because when you walk, the light of the gospel is going to shine through you. The light of Jesus Christ is going to come and go, touch that person. For the anointing destroys the yoke of bondage. It is the anointing, the power of God within you, church. You can understand that. Point at me. Point at you. Me, point at me. I'm pointing at me and saying, you know what? I am going to do that. I am going to sit back, read the Word, study the Word, pray. But when I go out, I'm going to go out understanding that Jesus Christ goes with me. The power of God will flow through me into other lives. 
It'll flow into other lives and we're going to see people come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. If you're watching from any other church, you are welcome. Call us if we can help in any way. For our church, HFCC, you need us, call us. But if you are listening to me and you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour, can't help it, every time, you have to say, the arms of Jesus are open wide and saying to you, come to me. All you have to do is say, Jesus, come into my heart. Make me brand new. And he will. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you that your joy is, is, is our strength and that today, Lord, we know that we can be an example in the world. And I pray over HFCC that their attitude is one, Lord. Their attitude is one of humility and full of faith. They are going to make a change. They're going to make a, a, a light wherever they go. They're going to shine as bright lights in a dark world. Give you praise for it, Father, and thank you in Jesus' name. Church, I love you. I really do. Diana and I just adore you. I know Pastor Sean and Megan, Pastor Tony and Kathy and all our leadership praying for you every day. If anything we can do, get hold of us. But I just want to tell you, love you with all our hearts. God bless and have a great night. Bye. Thank you.